Hi, hello. My name is Abdul Karim from uh, University of Science uh, Malaysia. In this presentation, I would like to talk about flipped classroom. Well, if you have been following the trends in higher education, uh, flipped classroom is a buzzword, and there's, there's been a lot of discussion on uh, flipped classroom uh, because I think now more and more educators around the world are very interested to transform their classroom to make uh, learning more effective for their students. So basically flipped classroom is about, um, the bottom line of flipped classroom is about engaging the students uh, in the classroom so that the students can learn more effectively and learning can be uh, more meaningful. So the flipped classroom, as you can see on my uh, slide here, is about the practice of classroom is about uh, classroom makeover. So I'll be sharing with you um, some of the important aspects of flipped classroom and hopefully at the end of this presentation uh, you will learn something uh, useful and practical which you can use uh, immediately in your own uh, classroom environment. So I'll start with uh, defining or describing what is flipped classroom. The what, the why, why you want to do a flipped classroom and why now. Then the, uh, the how part, what are the steps involved. So I'll be showing some of the uh, essential steps that you need to follow in order for your flipped classroom to be uh, successful. Then what are the technology? Of course, um, flipped classroom, you can do without technology in some uh, other formats, but of course, uh, we can use technology to facilitate and to add value in our flipped classroom um, delivery. And hopefully at the end of this presentation, uh, after you have listened and learned and understand how to go about us uh, using uh, and applying flipped classroom, uh, I hope you can apply and develop your own model of flipped classroom in your own context, in your own course. So let me start by uh, looking at the big picture. Because uh, now uh, we are in the 21st century, so we are talking about the 21st century education which is in different, uh, maybe the context is different compared to the past centuries, uh, you know, in the 20th, 19th, or even uh, 18th centuries, because we have a different kind of uh, students, a different generation, and because we have uh, technology and, and so on. So how the 21st century education is different, and how do we respond to these to this, uh, changes in the 21st century education to make uh, our education more uh, um, impactful. So let me start by asking you this question for us together to ponder upon. How well does today's education prepare students for the 21st uh, century? Well, as I mentioned earlier, um, in the past centuries and even now, if we, look, if we observe any uh, classroom uh, in the school or even at the university, still, by and large, the, uh, the, class to, the classroom is very traditional um, in the sense that the teacher, you know, standing in front of the class and delivering and giving the information and transmitting the information. So this is what uh, sometimes we, we say, you know, uh, we, we use the term sage on the stage. So basically, you know, just like what I'm doing now, I'm the sage and I'm giving the information uh, to you or to the students. But what we actually want uh, to do rather than is what uh, also we call as a teacher-centered. So we want to move from teacher-centered to student-centered where the students will take the responsibility and they will uh, participate and involve uh, in their own learning and construct their own knowledge and construct their own meaning. So sage on the stage to guide on the side or teacher-centered to the student-centered. Um, well, the reason why we want to move uh, from the uh, traditional to the flipped classroom model, uh, because we, if we look at what we are doing you know, in our own uh, practice in the classroom, uh, the one hour lecture or maybe about 50 minutes lecture, basically uh, some of the issues is classroom periods are too short. We have only 50 minutes to giving content, you know, to give the knowledge, to impart the knowledge, uh, so usually we don't have enough time to question uh, the students, uh, to get them or to engage them in the, in the discussion or in the reflection. 
and there's not enough time for interact, uh, you know, a proper and meaningful interaction between the teacher and the students and among the students, among their peers, and let alone, you know, uh, good discussion. So in other words, there is less opportunity for active learning. So, in general, um, no matter what course you are teaching, whether it's something like, you know, this uh, physics or mathematics or arts or, you know, uh, social science, whatever subjects, just name it, Usually, you know, the teacher, uh, one of our, um, what, 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 what we always have in mind, you know, we want to make the course more interesting, more engaging, and more fun, and yet, the bottom line, it must be effective. So, we cannot, um, you know, uh, the, I mean, the, the basis of good uh, pedagogical approach is always back on the theoretical, you know, sound uh, pedagogical principles. For example, from the cognitive uh, in, in, uh, aspect, uh, Bloom taxonomy, which is a very uh, well known uh, in, uh, you know, um, to, 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 to help us design the classroom um, strategies. But by and large, uh, the teacher-centered approach or sage on the stage model um, actually focus more on the low level thinking in the Bloom taxonomy, meaning that the students actually focus more on remembering the facts or maybe to some extent understand and to some extent maybe apply. But I think um, the, the focus perhaps in the system actually uh, more on uh, you know, encouraging the students to remember the facts and then try to regurgitate the facts uh, in the examination, to some extent maybe understanding. But what we want to, uh, to have more in, in, you know, in for effective learning is to move from the low level thinking in the Bloom taxonomy to the higher, uh, at the, to the higher order thinking in the Bloom taxonomy, which uh, you know, the strategy is designed to, to help the students to develop the skills to analyze, evaluate, and create. 